great is our God. Our Lord is great and greatly to be praised. My name is Reverend Glenn Snowden. I am an associate pastor here at Canaan Baptist Church of Christ in Springfield, Massachusetts, where our senior pastor is Reverend Dr. W.C. Watson, Jr. We would like to present a Bible study for you on this time. We welcome you to our YouTube channel, Canaan Baptist Church of Christ, Springfield, Mass. We invite you to hit the subscribe button and that, so that you can continually follow us throughout this season. We will continually have Bible studies and worship services that you can watch and enjoy. Invite your friends, your family, your co-workers to enjoy and hear the word of the Lord. With that, I would like to enter into prayer at this moment. Most holy God, how great is your power, is your glory, and is your strength. We thank you for being able to open the word of God, to be able to hear what thus saith the Lord during this season. We ask and invite the Holy Spirit to lead this Bible study. And we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and for the sins of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for this Bible study is found in the book of Psalms, the 61st chapter. I will be reading from the King James Version of Psalm 61. The word of the Lord declares in verse 1, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock, that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, for thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name, Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and to the reading of his word. I will focus mainly on Psalm 61 verses 1 through 3. I'd like to focus on those verses and simply entitle this Bible study that God is our shelter. That God is our shelter. This psalm was written for the chief musician. It was a psalm of David and it was to be accompanied by string instruments. Theologians believe that David wrote this psalm either when he was on the run from his son Absalom, his son tried to overthrow the kingdom of his father David, or maybe he wrote it when he was hiding in the wilderness from King Saul, who pursued him relentlessly. But either way, the Lord had delivered David through many years of troubles, through many years of trials, and through many years of tribulations. So David wrote, looking back, how the Lord had brought him through. And he gave the Lord praise, because the Lord brought him from many places, through many struggles. This psalm is simply a testimony to the Lord's goodness in the life of David. God had brought David through so much that when he closed the psalm in verse 8, he declared, I will sing praise unto thy name forever. 
forever. David was grateful for the deliverance of the Lord. David recognized as he wrote this song that had it not been for the Lord on his side, where would he be? When we read Psalm 61, David teaches us some attributes of God. Number one in verse one, that God hears our prayers. In verse three, that God is a shelter. Verse four, that God is our protector because he covers us with his wings. Verse seven, God will preserve his people by using his mercy and his truth. And verse eight, God is worthy of our praise. How great is our God? This text is an appropriate word from the Lord as you and I are facing a season of upheaval, as we face this crisis, this pandemic. Our community is affected. Our nation is affected. Our church family is affected. But I came here to tell you, to remind you, that our God is a shelter. What is a shelter? A noun for the word shelter is a place giving temporary protection from bad weather or danger. A verb describes shelter, meaning to protect or to shield from something harmful, especially bad weather. The Hebrew translation for shelter is a place of refuge from the rain, from the storm, and from danger. When we face storms in our life, our first tendency is always to run for shelter. If there's a thunderstorm, we run to seek shelter from the rain. If there's a flood, people seek shelter by heading to higher ground. If there's a nor'easter, people will seek shelter within their homes. To sum it up, the Hebrew for shelter and refuge, the two words are interchangeable. Shelter, refuge, refuge, and shelter. They mean the same thing. Maybe that's how David could say in Psalm 46.1 that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. As you and I face this outbreak of COVID-19, our governors across the nation have put into effect something called a shelter in place. We have been instructed to distance ourselves and to find shelter in our homes, shelter in our families, shelter in our places of residence. And as we hear this term, shelter in place, we realize that this is a perfect time to find shelter in the Lord our God. Because He is our refuge. He is our shelter. He is our fortress. As we examine Psalm 61, verses 1 through 3, there's two topics that I'd like to focus on. Prayer and provision. In verse 1 and 2, David prays to God. And in verse 3, we see that God has provided a shelter for King David. Prayer, I like to focus on because it draws us closer to God. And then I'd like to focus on the topic of provision. Philippians 4.19 reminds us that our God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we shelter in place at this time, but we also shelter in God because God is our shelter. When we read verse 1, David cries out to the Lord in prayer. He says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. 
lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. When we watch the news, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. David himself declared that he was overwhelmed by the situations that chased him, that pursued him, that wanted to destroy him. And when David was overwhelmed, he cried out to the Lord in prayer. So during this season, we want to invite you to cry out to the Lord in prayer, to lift up prayers unto the Lord our God in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus teaches us often about prayer. We know that in Matthew 6, 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, that Jesus teaches us about how to pray. He says in Matthew 6, 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, when you pray, not if you pray, or if you remember to pray, or if you feel like praying, but when you pray. It is expected as God's people and as Christians that we pray to the Lord. Jesus tells us to shut the door and pray in secret. We know that God opens doors. We know that God closes doors. And right now, across our nation, all the doors are shut. Businesses are shut. Schools are shut. Even courthouses are shut. While everything is shut, this is a when you pray opportunity. Jesus is inviting us to pray to the Father and to cry out to him like King David did. We have to find our prayer closet and shut the door and pray. Now our prayer closet may not be an actual physical closet. We can pray anywhere, anytime, at any place. But Jesus wants us to shut the door. Shut the door to all the distractions that are going on in our world. To shut out the fears, to shut out the worry, to shut out the anxiety, and come before the Lord. As we shut the door to everything we're facing right now, we open the door to God. We open the door in prayer and invite God into our shelter. Talk to the Lord. He wants to hear from you. There's no problem that's too insignificant for God. Just talk to the Lord. He wants to know you and for you to know him in all the fullness of his glory. We learn a lot from David. He was a prayer warrior. Oh, he was a, a warrior on the battlefield for God, but he knew how to pray. And he knew how to praise. And he knew how to worship. We can learn a lot from King David, whose life was full of trials and ups and downs and challenges. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4, 6-7, he says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds to Christ Jesus. I love reading this in the New Living Translation. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for all He has done. Tell Him what you need. And thank Him. Don't forget to give Him praise. Praise Him in advance, before the prayer is even answered. Just give God praise and give Him glory. 
Verse 7 in the New Living Translation says, Then you will experience God's peace. And God's peace exceeds anything we can understand. So as everything's in upheaval now, and we don't know what today brings, or this afternoon brings, or tomorrow brings, when you pray to God, God will give you peace. Peace that passes all understanding. And God's peace, it guards our hearts. It guards, it guards our minds so that we can live in the peace of God. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He's done. And God will supply peace. You can't have peace without prayer. You have to pray in order to get peace. People will go and stand in line hours before a store opens to get what they need. But when you go into your prayer closet, everything's in there that you need. The shelves are full of everything you could possibly imagine. If you need peace, go into your prayer closet, wherever it is, and ask God for peace. God can't run out of peace. You can ask God for joy. You can ask God for strength. You can go into your prayer closet and come out with your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know how we have clothes in our closet? Well, we can go in and wrap ourselves in a garment of praise and give God glory in our prayer closet. You can go into your prayer closet and receive the, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Whatever you need, God's got it. But you got to go into your prayer closet. The shelves will never be empty. They're overflowing. The Word says that our cup runneth over. Go into your prayer closet and seek God. Paul tells the church in Thessalonica, in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, to pray without ceasing. To pray without stopping. You can pray without ceasing. You don't have to be on your knees. You can be in your car. You can be in your home. You can be going for a walk. And just talk to the Father. He wants to hear from you. And as we shelter in place, we shelter in God. Because God is our shelter. So talk to the Father. Pray without ceasing. They can be short prayers. Just stay in communication with the Lord. You know how many text messages we receive and send out during the day? What if we, we, we talk to God like we talk to everyone else? Just quick, short messages. Lord, I need you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, bring us through this. Lord, hear our prayer. The word says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek his face, mm, God will bring us through this, but he wants us. He's calling the church. He's calling people who may have stopped praying because you gave up on God, because he didn't answer a prayer here, and he didn't answer a prayer there, but God has everything in the palm of his hand. And just because he doesn't answer one prayer doesn't mean stop praying. you got to go back and keep knocking. I know Jesus talks about asking and seeking and knocking and no growing, not growing weary and well-doing. Because we will reap a harvest of blessings if we faint not. This is not the time to faint. This is not the time to be overcome with worry. This is not the time to become over, overcome with anxiety. This is the time to pray to the Lord our God. If you need anything, God has it. If you need assurance, God has it. If you need a shoulder to cry on, God is available 24-7. Just let your tears flow and tell God what you need, and God will make a way. Jesus teaches us how to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was about to go to the cross, and he was overwhelmed with anxiety with fear, but he cried out to the Lord. And don't you know in the Gospel of Luke, the Bible says that, and God sent an angel, and it strengthened Jesus. And Jesus got up, he got arrested, 
He went to the cross. He died on the cross. And he rose from the dead. But God gave him the strength to do it. Because Jesus prayed. And if Jesus can pray, so can you and so can I. So here we are, reading through Psalm 61, verses 1 through 3. For those who are joining us who may have just logged in, our topic is God is our shelter. As we continue to focus on the Word of God, we want to just continue this thought that God is our shelter. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He's a shelter and our refuge. There's no thing that's too great for God. There's no pandemic. There's no virus that's too great for our Father. So this is a season of prayer. This is a season of petition. This is a season to cry out to God and say, Lord, we need you. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but you do, Father. You knew this was coming, and you know when it's going. So, Father, we pray that you will keep us in perfect peace, because your word declares thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord Jehovah, for in the Lord there is everlasting strength. So we pray to the Father. Whether it's the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, our provision. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but God, please deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. So at this time, in closing, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Canyon Baptist Church of Christ, Springfield Mass, our YouTube channel, where our senior pastor is Reverend Dr. W.C. Watson, Jr. I serve as associate pastor, Reverend Glenn Snowden. And we invite you to continue to log on to this channel. There will be future worship services. There will be future Bible studies as we bring the Word of God to His people. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your home. And we just thank you and ask that you continue to pray for us. And we will continue to pray for you. We will now have a musical conclusion by our musician, Lorraine Joyce Aiden. sits high 
and looks low. We thank you that heaven is your throne room and earth is your footstool. We humble ourselves before you at this time. We confess our sins and our faults before you. And we thank you for your Lord, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask you in the name of Jesus that you will keep us in perfect peace, that we will pray to you in season and out of season. And we just want to thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As our music leads us out. Amen.